For this video, we'll work with the teapot primitive item. And one way to add that primitive to your scene is go up to the geometry drop down menu item, click on it, go to unit primitives, over to current mesh, and down all the way to the bottom here where it says teapot. And that's it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, shader tree. So if I go over to this right panel here where the scenes are and uh, go up to the tabs here, we can see the shader or the shading tab. Click on that and now you have full access and view of the shader tree system. So what is the shader tree? Well, the shader tree is essentially a panel that houses all the various items that are necessary for Moto to shade and render out your scene or rather everything that's in this viewport through the lens of a virtual camera. So now let's take a closer look at the shader tree and all the various item types that are housed within this panel. So when you first open a new scene in Moto, it populates the shader tree here with uh, the very minimum of what it needs to output a rendering. So let's take a very brief look at some of these item types and there are a lot more item types you can add to the shader tree but for now let's just take a look at what we've got as a default. So at the top we have the render item and what that is is basically it's the render engine in, in Moto. Now there's two types of renders there's empath and there's the default. Uh, we will just deal mostly with the default right now. And if we go to an edge tab here, we can see there are settings for this particular render engine. And there's also a uh, global illumination settings as well. And we'll get into global illumination a bit later, but it is a part of how your scene is lit. The next item type we have is the outputs. And the outputs are, are basically uh, the images that Moto outputs uh, as a final render. You know, the uh, target files or JPEG or whatever you want to save it as. It also controls uh, things like, uh, you know, the file name, um, white levels and gray levels and all those sorts of, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you, you, you understand all of this sort of stuff here. But for the most part, the defaults that Moto has are really, really good and we won't have to deal with these too much. So now there's also an, al an alpha output type, which gives you a separate alpha channel if you want to output that as a separate uh, transparency map. Or, or you can also output things like um, ambient occlusion, reflection passes, and all these if you choose to composite your final image later in another application such as Photoshop. So all these various uh, render passes can be output as separate image files. Moving down from there, we have the uh, base shader item type and the base shader is basically a traffic cop if you will it's it kind of controls uh, the various type of rays that are being output to the final output color you can also adjust uh, fog settings if you are adding fog to your scene and it can also use this to link lights together to control them as a group next one down is the base material now the base material is what is actually applied to or material is actually what is applied to your model to the polygons themselves and uh, as a base here it's uh, going to apply a material to everything that's in your scene because it is not masked or not uh, confined to any one polygon and we'll get into that in a bit um, Library and nodes I'm not going to get into right now, but if we go down to lights, we can see here we have one light in our scene. If we had more lights, they would also be populated within this folder or this, this uh, parent item here. Click on that and the light too has a material. We can change the various settings on the light itself on each individual light that is. If we go down here to uh, this item type, which is the environment, we can see that too is housed as a parent-child uh, relationship of the environment item here. And within there, we have an environment. I want to call it a material, but it's really not a material. It is basically an environment shader and allows you to control whether this environment can be seen by the camera or seen by very specific rays that are being uh, calculated in your scene. Uh, the next item here, if I click that little down arrow to the child, is the uh, environment material. 
And this is where we can have a lot of fun playing with the look of the environment. For example, we can change the sky colors and uh, the gradients of that sky. We can, if we were using a physically based daylight rendering model, we can adjust some of the parameters right here. And we can actually add fog and uh, that sort of thing. So that's a basic overview of the items within the default shader tree. So now let's go ahead and start applying some materials to our models and see how those render.